the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I'm going to the altar of God. Descend to me, O God, and defend my cause against the ungodly people, or deliver me from the deceitful and wicked man. Ascend at thy light and thy truth that they believe me, and bring me unto thy holy hill and to thy dwelling. Why art thou so heavy, my soul, and why art thou so disquieted within me? Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. I'm going to the altar of God. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I confess to God Almighty, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, Blessed Michael, the Archangel, Blessed John the Baptist, the Holy Apostles, Peter and Paul, Blessed Francis, to all the saints, and to you, my brethren, that I have sinned exceedingly in thought, word and deed, by my fault, and my own fault, by my most grievous fault. Wherefore, I beg, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, Blessed Michael, the Archangel, Blessed John the Baptist, the Holy Apostles, Peter and Paul, Blessed Francis, all the saints, and you, my brethren, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Amen. God Almighty, have mercy upon thee, forgive thee thy sins, and bring thee to everlasting life. The Almighty and merciful Lord, grant unto us pardon and absolution and remission of our sins. Will thou not turn again and quicken us, O God? O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. O Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. We beseech thee, O Lord, take our iniquities away from us, that with pure minds and may worthily enter the Holy of Holies, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. We pray, dear Lord, that you merit thy saints as well as your holy saints, that thou blessed to depart of my sins. Amen. The Lord is the strength of his people, a safe refuge for his anointed. Save my people and bless thine inheritance. Shepherd them and carry them forever. O Lord, I call to thee, my rock, do not be deaf to my call, lest if thou dost not hear me, and become like those who go down to the pit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. 
the Lord is the strength of his people, a safe refuge for his anointed. Save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Shepherd them and carry them forever. Lord have mercy upon us, Lord have mercy upon us, Lord have mercy upon us. Christ have mercy upon us, Christ have mercy upon us, Christ have mercy upon us. Lord have mercy upon us, Lord have mercy upon us, Lord have mercy upon us. to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee, we glorify Thee, we give thanks to for thy great glory, O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, Receive our prayer, Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father. Have mercy upon us, for Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with the Spirit. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, who art the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of thy name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and of thy great mercy keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah, beginning at the 20th chapter and the 7th verse. O Lord, thou hast deceived me, and I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I, 
and thou hast prevailed. I have become a laughing stock all the day. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I cry out, I shout, violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and a derision all day long. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, there is in my heart as it were a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is on every side. Denounce him. Let us denounce him, say all my familiar friends watching for my fall. Perhaps he will be deceived. Then we can overcome him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me as a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble. They will not overcome me. They will be greatly shamed, for they shall not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, who tries the righteous, who seest the heart and the mind, let me see thy vengeance upon them. For to thee have I committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hand of the evildoers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I stick fast in the deep mire where no ground is. I am come into deep waters so that the floods run over me. I am weary of crying. My throat is dry. My sight faileth me for waiting so long upon my God. They that hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of my head. They that are mine enemies and would destroy me guiltless are mighty. I paid them the things that I never took. God, thou knowest my sinfulness, and my faults are not hid from thee. Let them that trust thee, O Lord God of hosts, be ashamed for my cause. Let not those that seek thee be confounded through me, O Lord God of Israel. And why, for thy sake, have I suffered reproof? Shame hath covered my face. I am become a stranger unto my brethren, even an alien unto my mother's children. For the zeal of thine house hath even eaten me, and the rebukes of them that rebuke thee are fallen upon me. I wept and chastened myself with fasting, and that was turned to my reproof. I put on sackcloth also, and they jested upon me. They that sit in the gate speak against me and the end drunkards make songs upon me. But, Lord, I make my prayer unto thee in an acceptable time. Hear me, O God, in the multitude of thy mercy, even in the truth of thy salvation. Take me out of the mire, that I sink not. O oh, let me be delivered from them that hate me, 
and out of the deep waters. A reading from the letter of blessed Paul the Apostle to the Romans. For if many died through one man's trespass, much more have, much more have the grace of God and the free gift in the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. And the free gift is not like the effect of that one man's sin. <clears throat> For the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation, but the free gift <clears throat> following many trespasses brings justification. If because of one man's trespass death reigned through that one man, much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Then as one man's trespass led to condemnation for all, so one man's act of righteousness leads to acquittal and life for all men. For as one man's disobedience Many were made sinners, so by one man's obedience many will be made righteous. <clears throat> the word of the Lord. <clears throat> Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. The continuation of the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of men, for they will deliver you up to councils and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings for horror my sake, to bear testimony before them and the Gentiles. When they deliver you up, do not be anxious how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you in that hour. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will deliver up brother to death, and the father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death and you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end will be saved. 
When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly I say to you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the disciple to be like his teacher and the servant be like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be known. What I tell you in the dark, utter in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fall to the ground without your Father's will. But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The scripture passages for this Sunday speak a good deal about facing hostility out in the world. The prophet Jeremiah complains about how he's basically become a laughing stock. As a God-anointed prophet, he cannot but help proclaim the word that God has put in his mind and on his heart. And yet, as he does, the world is hostile, and yet he has confidence in God. He says, the Lord is with me as a dread warrior, therefore my persecutors will stumble. In a similar way, the psalmist turns to God for the same kind of protection. For thy sake I have suffered reproach. O let me be delivered from them that hate me. St. Paul reminds us in his epistle to the Romans that we are disobedient sinners who stand under God's judgment and that our only salvation is in Christ. And today's gospel talks about persecution and the courage of discipleship under fire. Before sending them out on their first mission trip, healing mission, Jesus cautioned his apostles, I send you out like sheep in the midst of wolves. You will be hated by all for my name's sake, but don't be afraid. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Jesus did not tell them that they would never suffer at the hands of their enemies. In fact, he tells them exactly the opposite. But it is clear that God would be with them. And they were given divine authority by Christ himself to act in his name. And for those places where their ministry would not be received, Jesus said it's going to be more tolerable for those towns 
on the in, in the land of Sodom and Gomorrah than it is for that town. The judgment against their enemies would be all the more severe because God would be with them every step of the way. It reminds me of the way that the Israelites went into battle in the Old Testament. Whenever God told them to go to war, he would do the fighting for them. In fact, he was on the front lines of the battlefield. Moses would have the Levites carry the Ark of the Covenant, that visible, tangible sign of God's presence with them on earth, carry it right out of the tabernacle and into the front lines of the battlefield on their way to the Promised Land. And that's how it began with the conquest once they entered the Promised Land in Jericho, if you remember. They got the Ark, they marched it around the city for seven days, they blew their trumpets and the city walls came crumbling down. And they had the victory because God was with them and gave it to them. When we receive Holy Communion, God is with us. God is with us when we leave this place and carry him out into the world. When we worship and adore him, when we pray and read his sacred word, God is with us and goes along with us into the battle when we face the hostility of the world, the flesh, and the devil. And let's face it, a committed disciple will sometimes bring out hostility. It will always be as Jesus said, if they hated me, they're going to hate you too. And the more devout and committed a believer is, the more hostile the world, the flesh, and the devil will become. And the commitment of a disciple is supposed to be a total commitment. That's why some of the most perfect saints end up as martyrs. When you become a disciple of the Lord Jesus, you're not required to improve yourself, to change your life and your habits a little here, a little there. You're required to be born again. When you're baptized, you die with Christ to your old self so that he can give you a new one in its place. And by the power of God's grace, you are recreated from the inside out, and we become new creatures in Christ Jesus. Historians tell us that in the early church, they didn't really need a large body of canon law, rules and regulations to live by. They had the one sufficient rule or canon, which was martyrdom, that perfect likeness to Christ that led to suffering and death. Jesus is our beginning, and Jesus is our perfect end. And that's why Christ is our greatest source of strength. That's why the Eucharist, Christ himself, is the fount of all the church's power. That's why the Word of God, Christ himself, is our greatest weapon. Remember the full armor of God that Paul talks about in Romans. Every piece of that armor is defensive in nature except for the sword, which is the word of God. God does the battle for us. It's no mistake that we gather, of course, on the Lord's Day to worship by continuing the memorial of Christ's sacrifice on the cross, which he commanded us to continue, to bring the power and the presence of Christ's incarnation, passion, death and resurrection into every time and place so that God could be with us when we face the challenges of life, not only in the tabernacle and the cloud above the ark, but also out there in the world in our daily battles that we face, waging the fight of faithfulness against temptations from within and against persecution and hostility from without. I like the way that the Bible scholar Father Raymond Brown described the commitment of the, of the soldiers of King David's army during the dark days of the Civil War. He said, quote, their duty at that moment was to obey the king's instructions and to trust his wisdom. It meant that they were probably going into a life of hardship, insecurity, privation, suffering, and possibly death. But they would be with the king, and that was enough. Discipleship may require an awful lot of commitment, commitment to things that involve hardship and suffering, insecurity. But we will be working with the King of Kings 
and that is enough for us. Jesus said, it is enough for the disciple to be like his teacher. Jesus is saying, you are of more value to me than anything else in the world. Don't think about turning back. Be my disciple. I will be enough for you. Now, follow me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things, visible and invisible and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost, of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us, under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world, saying, Hear our prayer. for the peace of the whole world and for the well-being and unity of the people of God. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our prayer. 
for Francis Pope, for Justin of Canterbury, for Nicholas and Foley, our primates, for Ryan, our bishop, and for all the clergy and people of our diocese and congregation. Lord, in thy mercy. For all those who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, and for all who teach and disciple others, Lord, in thy mercy. For our brethren in Christ who are persecuted for their faith, Lord, in thy mercy. For our nation, for those in authority, and for all in public service, especially Joe, our president, our Congress and courts, Gregory, our governor, and Eric, our mayor, Lord, in thy mercy. For all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially for those in need or adversity in our parish intercessions. We pray for those in our military, especially for Ryan, for his family. We pray for our project, Gabriel Mothers, Children, and their angels. We pray for those celebrating anniversaries this week, of birth, Mark, of baptism, Stephen and John Homer, of confirmation, Ray, and of ordination, Father Duncan. Lord, in thy mercy, For all those who have departed this life in the certain hope of the resurrection, especially Carol, Deacon Fred, Shelton, Mercedes, John, Kurt, Lewis, David, Madeline, Adam, Sissy, and William, in thanksgiving let us pray. Lord, in thy mercy. In the communion of blessed Mary, the ever-Virgin Mother of God, Blessed Francis, our patron, and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. Lord, in thy mercy. Grant, O Lord, we beseech thee that the course of this world may be so peaceably ordered by thy governance that thy church may joyfully serve thee in all godly quietness. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead the new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and make your humble confession unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins, to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
You may be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you all today. Glad you joined us for our worship. Uh, we'll be sort of continuing our purge of the closets after church, so if you would like to assist us with that, please do so. And just a reminder that Bishop Reed's annual visitation is coming up next Sunday, and he'll be uh, here just for the 1015 Mass. Also, a reminder that our friends down the road at St. Monica's invite us to their patriotic um, concert, which is this coming Saturday, uh, with the picnic at 6 and the music at 7. We offer the holy sacrifice today, the praise and glory of Almighty God, and thanksgiving for his many blessings, and with special intention for the people of the parish. I invite you to bring your intentions, along with your hearts, to present to God upon his holy altar today. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Session of Blessed Michael, the Archangel, stand at the right hand of the altar of incense, but have all received the sacrifice as a and excitement for our salvation and the whole world. Amen. May this incense which thou hast blessed descend into the other world, and thy mercy descend upon us. And my prayer, Lord, be set forth in my sight as the incense, and lift up in my hands be a living sacrifice. So to watch, O Lord, before my mouth, keep the door of my lips, let not my heart be inclined to any evil thing, that we not be occupied in ungodly works. The Lord kindle in us the fire of his love, and the flame of eternal change. Amen.
I will wash my hands in this and see the Lord. In possession of the mantras and the song that is given to a wonderful works. Lord, I love the house, the creation, the praise of the divine and the Lord. I shall my soul with sinners, but I will go thirsty. My sins are wicked as my handful of gifts. But as for me, I will visit me. I will deliver the mercy of my family, my first friend of God, and praise all the congregations. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Ghost, as it was in the beginning, as now, and ever shall be. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. This is the Holy Trinity, the salvation of the Lord, from the memory of the Passion and Resurrection, and Sons of the Lord Jesus Christ. And on the Blessed Mary of the Virgin, the Son of the Baptist, and the Apostles, be done upon by the saints, and be to the honor of our salvation, make his will much plead for us in heaven, through the same Christ our Lord. Pray, brethren, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Amen. O Lord, we beseech thee mercifully to receive our oblations and graciously turn our rebel wills to thee. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, Throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee. O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying. be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. 
Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and of thine almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless, and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we receive in them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. For the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all the benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. Remember also, O Lord, thy servants and handmaids who have gone before us, sealed with the seal of faith, and who sleep the sleep of peace. To them, O Lord, and to all that rest in Christ, we beseech thee to grant the abode of refreshing, of light, and of peace. To us sinners, also thy servants, who hope in the multitude of thy mercies, vouchsafe to grant some part and fellowship with thy holy apostles and martyrs, and with all thy saints, within whose fellowship we beseech thee to admit us. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee. O Father, almighty world without end. Amen. Let us pray. And now, as our Saviour Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Deliver us, we beseech thee, O Lord, from all evils past, present, and to come, and at the intercession of the blessed and glorious of the Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with that of thy blessed Apostle Peter and Paul, with Andrew and all thy saints, favorably grant us peace in our days, that by the help of thine availing mercy we may ever both be free from sin and safe from all distress. Through the same Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, be with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, liveth and reigneth God, world without end. In this moment of consecration by the Lord of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are to all receive. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Jesus Christ, who says to thine apostles, Peace I live with you, my peace I give unto you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of thy church, and grant her peace in unity according to thy will. Who liveth and reignest with the Father and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that taketh away the sins of the world. Blessed are they that are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Jesus Christ, keep him in the last thing you The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep him in the last thing you The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep him in the last thing you The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep him in the last thing you
our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul to lasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart by faith with thanksgiving. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto lasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart by faith with thanksgiving. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto lasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart by faith with thanksgiving. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep him in everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul into the last of life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart by faith with thanksgiving. The blessing of God be upon you always. Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul into the last of life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart by faith with thanksgiving. The blessing of God be upon you always. Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep in everlasting life. The blessing of God be upon you always. Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul to everlasting life. The blessing of God be upon you always. Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul to everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul into everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart, by faith, with thanksgiving. Praise the Lord, and take a look, some seed, pure heart, the temple gift, and come for us eternal remedy. Thy body, O Lord, I take a little jug, and give my soul. Grant the most name of sin, and remain in me, and thou shalt refresh with these spirit, and all these sacraments, and you live with the reigns for without end. Amen. Let this my plan and duty and service be pleasing to thee, O Holy Trinity, and grant that this sacrifice which I work. Don't thou hast thy majesty may be acceptable unto thee. May thou thy mercy obtain a gracious favor for me and for all for whom I have offered it through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God. We most heartily thank Thee 
For that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. We beseech thee, O Lord, that the mysteries which we have received may cleanse us from all our sins, and by the gifts therein bestowed, defend us from all adversities. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you, and remain with you always. Amen. The Mass is ended. Depart in peace. The Lord be with you. The beginning of the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory be to thee, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for to witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteneth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God. Blessed have worshipped and adored be our Lord Jesus Christ, on his throne of glory in heaven, and most blessed is the of the altar in the hearts of his faithful people. May the divine mercies remain with us always, and may the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercies of God rest in peace, and may life perpetual shine upon them. Amen.